Hello and welcome back to Mate's Tottenham blog and to another Tottenham Hotspur Transfer Talk episode. Today we have got a bit of breaking news coming from David Ornstein of The Athletic UK regarding Tottenham's uh, current transfer targets. Uh, according to David Ornstein, we were well in the mix for Ali Watkins, but unfortunately could not uh, get that deal over the line. And at the moment, as Ornstein says, Tottenham do not have a, a transfer target in mind. Now, there's a few other sources that are talking about a few other targets, which we will be going through today. But as it stands, according to The Athletic UK, and I suppose the lack of the lack of rumours coming from a lot of other uh, transfer sources, it does look as though Tottenham could potentially be in a position where we don't have a transfer target uh, for uh, a backup or a competition for Harry Kane. Now, before I get into the video, if you do want more transfer rumours like this, plus interactive live streams, match previews, reviews, and general Tottenham, ana Tottenham analysis videos, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload. So reflecting on this news from David Ornstein, it, it is certainly uh, a very, very worrying update from, from him, a, a man who has been very reliable with transfer news uh, and things like that over the last couple of years, especially within London. Um, so we'll take a look in a second exactly what he did, ha did have to say about this move for Tottenham. But it's it's concerning that, again, we're in a position where we, we could potentially not be having a... Well, almost definitely we won't have a backup striker for the start of the season, or as a lot of people have been saying in the comments and, and other forums, we shouldn't really be looking for a backup. We should be looking for a direct competition uh, for Harry Kane, which I suppose, given the the uh, fixture congestion that we do have, especially at the beginning of this season, uh, that would probably be the best option for us at the moment. Uh, missing out on... Well, potentially missing out on Callum Wilson. We don't know too much about just how much interest Tottenham had in that. Uh, Sky Sports did report at the end of July that we did have an interest in the striker, but uh, as far as they were concerned, it never developed to anything more than that. Uh, the majority of transfer sources, it was the same with um, Ollie Watkins. But as we're going to look at now, um, that could be a bit different with what uh, David Ornstein had to say. You see there at the top, he had, uh, Tottenham were Villa's main rivals. Watkins was open to the move and confident he would have enjoyed plenty of game time across numerous competitions. However, Spurs were not in a position to move quickly because of the finances involved uh, with the strikers rapidly inflating fee proving too difficult an obstacle for the club to overcome at the speed required so I think that in a roundabout way saying what we've known for quite a bit and what we've been hearing from um, a number of different sources that Tottenham perhaps just do not have the finances this summer of course we've gone for a free move with Joe Hart and two uh, cup price Premier League players in Hoiberg and Doherty both for about £15 million pounds each and it does look as though we do have to sell before we can buy and perhaps the 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 failed Serge Aurier move to AC Milan, maybe that was something that the club were expecting to be done by this stage so we could finance a move like this. Uh, but at the moment, it just doesn't look like uh, we can get that deal done. And there's another bit at the end of this from uh, David Ornstein where he says, um, Tottenham have been linked with King, although he's... Uh, talking about Josh King for, from Bournemouth. Tottenham have been linked with King, although he is not thought to be high up on the recruitment lists at present. And after missing out on Watkins, it is understood that Spurs do not yet have a firm attacking target in mind. Which is 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 massively concerning. There's 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 no other way to say that. It is a a very worrying thing for us at the moment that we just we don't have. It's it almost seems a simple thing that you're going to have a, a list of players, a, a good list of players that you can bring in um, throughout the summer. We miss out on Watkins probably was our main target, judging by what Ornstein does have to say, and from the rumours going around uh, other press outlets. And the fact that our, our, our list could have been that short, if it was just Ali Watkins, if it was Wilkins and uh, Callum Wilson, we don't know. But the fact that we're this early on in the window, still a month left in it, and already we seem to be out of options. You know, is it going to be another case of the, the burden being almost entirely on Harry Kane? If you're looking at, I mean, we have, I think it's ten nine fixtures in 20 days across mid-September to early August, which is just, it's very concerning. And Harry Kane, given his injury history and his, his lack of pre-season, I, I don't think it's going to be possible for him to do that. And I doubt, I doubt many people do. But I also doubt there are many people who are surprised that we are in this position where yet again, it, it could just be Harry Kane. Of course, we do have players like Son, Lucas, Ali, who can play in that attacking role, but it's it's a similar thing behind that striker in that front three that we're going to need to rotate. We're going to need uh, a lot of different options there, a lot of different people to keep fit. And if we do have to sacrifice one of those two uh, into that forward role uh, regularly, it's, it's not going to be good for us. We need to get a striker in and... I mean, it's. I'm kind of running out of ways to describe just how poor the recruitment is in that uh, attacking area. It's it's just really, really concerning. Now, we do have uh, two uh, potential targets uh, reported by Alistair Gold there, Habib Diallo of FC Mets and uh, Pat Sendaka of Red Bull Salzburg. Bringing in players from Europe, it, it, it's always a risk. I mean, 
we see, of course, with Tangi and Dombele, who's one of the best players in the French League One, and all of a sudden he's, you know, half our fans want him out of the club. Uh, looking at, I suppose, Habib Diallo, uh, for starters, he is, of course, a 25 year old striker who plays for FC Mets. Uh, he's four caps and one goal for, for Senegal, his international team. He has an exceptional record at Mets. There's, there's no doubting that. There's no denying that. He scored, joined them in 2015 from, from their academy, um, and a few loan spells in between his time there, but he's gone on to score 48 league goals in 100 appearances, which is, I mean, it's almost a goal every two games which is a really good record. But again, it is a French League one. There are a lot of players who've been able to do it over there but haven't been able to do it in the Premier League. Tongi and Damley, of course, one of them. But looking in recent years, uh, looking at Dimitri Pry- or not Dimitri Pry- at, uh Angel Di Maria for Manchester United, uh, Memphis Depay for Man United as well, and Florian Tovan uh, for Newcastle, who went on to, to do very, very well at Marseille. They're very, very different leagues. And Diallo... Look, as it says there, he's known for his finishing and his link-up play, which is kind of what Harry Kane does as well. He's When he gets the chances, he takes them, but he's also good at his all-round play. Uh, for Diallo, his breakthrough season came in 2018 after two loan spells at Brest, uh, where he scored 16 times in 50 appearances. Um, and he can also play on the left, which I think that versatility could be um, something that would lean us, let the club lean towards players like that, that he's not just a number nine, he's not just a striker. He can play in those other positions if it is needed. But I... I, I can't really sit here and say he is the best option for a striker, and I can't say I'd be overjoyed if we did sign him. He is a solid player. He is a decent option, but I, I wouldn't be happy if he was one of those who was top of our list of priorities. Um, but again, Alistair Gold saying it is just interest there. It's nothing beyond that uh, just yet. Now, as for Pat Sindaka, it's a it's a similar sort of thing there, playing in the in the Austrian Bundesliga. Uh, he's twenty one year old uh, forward for RB Salzburg. Uh, he, he can't play centre, but he can also play again on the left and the right. And that vital versatility is something that could put him push him up our list of priorities. But not just in a player, not just in him particularly, but I think that is something we should be looking for in whatever that forward slash strikers we do actually end up bringing into the club. Uh, exceptional record in the last year or so 24 goals in 31 league appearances last season and he already has seven and nine this season but again it's the austrian bundesliga now i'm not saying we can't get good players out of that league of course it was erling braut Haaland was playing with orby salzburg up until up until january and of course takumi minamino who signed for liverpool in the same transfer window came from salzburg and Haaland probably at the moment is one of the best strikers in, the, in europe minamino not having as much luck but he seems to be hitting form at liverpool now in pre-season uh, Daka is a Zambian international. He became the first Zambian to score in the Champions League uh, last season. He's uh, pacey and able to run in behind, which will uh, fall in very well with our counter-attacking threat and that uh, quick transition from defence to attack that we do enjoy. Um, he, he also poses an aerial threat. He's six foot tall, and in, in his first cup appearance of this season, he actually scored four times in Salzburg's. It was a 10-0 victory in the end, but... Uh, He's had a really, really good start to this season. And in terms of uh, a fee, both of them seem to be valued in and around £20 million, which is exactly what Newcastle paid for Wilson and is only eight below the initial fee that Aston Villa have paid for Ollie Watkins. Uh, but these two, of course, coming from uh, Alistair Gold as our potential targets for this window, but David Ornstein saying we don't have one yet. Um, look, it's potentially really worrying. It's I, I wouldn't say it's surprising, but... Uh, it's we'll have to see where this goes because you know as we know Fabrizio Romano said we're looking to sign three more players a centre back a winger and a forward uh, he seemed to think the centre back was the, the top of those priorities but from what we're hearing from other sources around Twitter um, and around the mainstream media it does look as though striker could be the number one priority and understandably so given that Harry Kane is looking to be looking likely to be on his own again for the start of the season at least. There's still a month left in this transfer window. I think it's the eighth of October when the uh, when the main window ends. And of course, there's about a week or ten days after that where clubs can trade with EFL clubs. If we're looking at potential EFL signings, I think the two best strikers would have been Callum Wilson and Ollie Watkins. But of course, they're both gone now. Um, there's still a few in and around there, but I don't think there's any that would be uh, at the level required. I suppose to be. Uh, a competition for Harry Kane if it is going to be back up maybe that could be a good option for us but there's still a lot of good players down there of course Josh King mentioned by Ornstein um, we'll have to wait and see uh, where that one goes I think there will be a lot of movement between EFL and Premier League clubs in that uh, 10 day window at the end of the main transfer window look as always leave down in the comments below your opinion on this uh, this update in the transfer window if you have any recommendations for uh, striker targets make sure to leave them down there as well and don't forget to put your opinions on Habib Diallo and Pat Sindaka uh, if you have enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and if you're new to the channel subscribe and as always thanks for watching